the beep has been removed from this video. And as always, this video is highly educational. Beep, beep, beep. Okay, in this video, we're going to take a very careful look at the way Barbie the Redback Spider bites into a beetle that she's captured within her spider home. This is the same type of beetle as we saw in the boroscope video, but we were so up close in that video, it's nice to step back a bit and also to see the whole time frame and how long it takes Barbie to gain control and how many spider bites she does to get control. Okay, I believe that's bite number one. We'll rewind this and so we'll take a closer look. I don't think it's a very clean bite, but it's pretty typical for these spiders to come in and try to get an antenna or possibly the leg, or if the spider can get a bite onto the body, that's even better. But I'm thinking this is more like a klutzy first bite because there needs to be some more web put onto this beetle to stop it from moving around so much. Anyway, I will count that as a bite, and as we go along in the video, I've got a counter there at the top of the video to count the number of bites. This beetle is actually fairly strong. It's got some good claws on it. It can move around in the web, but it has trouble getting out of the web. And Barbie applies lots and lots of web over the period of time it takes to control this beetle. This video was shot on my iPhone. The light on the iPhone was on as well. I zoomed in a fair bit on what the iPhone can do video-wise, and the phone is actually down inside Barbie's home to get this video. It's not a nice feeling holding an iPhone down inside a spider nest. And in real time, one minute into the time Barbie's with the beetle, she gets a second bite into the antenna area. This looks like a far more convincing bite and more effective than the first, I'll call it attempted bite, but we'll call the first one a bite. The second one looks like... It's got some venom in. And when the spider gets a successful bite into what it's biting, you tend to see a reaction from the critter that's bitten. That's one constant that I've seen when I've watched redback spiders biting into things they're about to eat. And we saw in the boroscope video with this beetle, that beetle's got some nasty chompers on it. If those chompers can go right through a redback spider's egg sac, no problems, I'm sure. They could latch onto one of Barbie's legs and take it off in an instant. But this second bite is far more successful than that first bite that we saw. And take a note of how wet Barbie's lips are with venom. I better put in some educational content or else I'm going to get smacked down by the system. I did some reading up about beetles. It's a very complex thing talking about beetles. Went to a wiki page and I'll have the link of the wiki page as always in my video info. And what it tells me is there are 400,000 species of beetles. And they're saying also it's about 40% of what they're calling the described insects. And reading on further, it then says that beetles represent 25% of all known animal life forms. So to translate that into layman's terms, because I'm not an entomologist, beetles are very common. There's lots of them out there. And if you remember Spider Tank 2, there was this little critter that became very famous. I called it Gonzo because it had a snout and eyes like Gonzo the Muppet. It was a weevil, and then I read that weevils are also a type of beetle. I think if you were going to choose beetles as something to study, I don't think you'd have a lifetime long enough to grasp everything that's going on with beetles. I'd had to get too educational, and while I've been jabbering on, Barbie's been very busy. She gets a web all right, and she gets in... Spider bite number three, and number three bite is a very successful bite. It's onto the leg of the beetle, and what I'm noticing as this progresses, Barbie gets better at getting good bites in to the beetle as she gains more control. Now, I'm not a total expert, but I would say that a bite into a leg is going to be far more effective versus a bite into a beetle's antenna. So at each bite... I've rewound the video, done that, I've come in closer, I've also done that, and I slow the video up so we want to see the fangy action of Barbie getting the venom into this beetle so she gets control of the situation. In real time, Barbie got the third bite in at roughly the three minute mark, but because we've been going back on things and slowing things up, the video doesn't represent real time anymore. So as it stands, we've had two bites into the antenna area of the beetle and also one really good bite into one of the beetle's legs. 
But there's plenty more bites to come before this beetle is dusted. Okay, we're back to real time. The spider bite count is at three. And in no time at all, and I'm not surprised because Barbie's a redback spider, she gets in bite number four. And this becomes a bit of a complex bite because she gets a bite into the leg and then, of course, the beetle reacts. And it does look like she comes in for another bite as well. I'm going to call that bite number five. And just like the other spider bites, I'm going to rewind the video. I'm going to come in closer. I'm going to slow the video up as well. And that way we really get to see clearly where the fangs meet the legs. And also the fact the beetle does react when a bite happens. So it's two bites into the antenna. And that would be three bites into the legs. I know you'll want to argue with me, but that's the way I'm seeing it. And as always, when I'm talking about redback spiders biting things, this is not a kiss of life. This is a kiss of death. Now, I've looked at redback spiders a lot. I've watched the way they bite. Now, one thing I will say about a redback spider is they're not the sort of spider that will bite first and then start doing webs. What they tend to do is they do their web work first. They get control of a critter. And when they think they can come in safely, they will get a bite in. In fact, I don't think I've got any video showing a redback spider racing down a web to something it's caught and biting first. Now, where the problem lies for humans being bitten is if a spider gets into a pinch point, let's say you put your fingers around a pot plant, you pick it up and there's a redback spider hiding there, well, the spider's going to react with a bite. Okay, we're back to real time, and we're moving on towards the next bite. I've already told you I shot this with my iPhone. The phone's down inside the spider nest. Now, I remember last summer when I was doing this, my phone used to keel over. It couldn't handle the heat stress of being down inside Barbie's home. And this video was shot in the late afternoon. We've got past our spring equinox, so the days are starting to get longer. It's becoming critter time in the garden because in spring, everything seems to burst into life. You start to see the skinks and lizards getting about. You start to see the ants being far more active. And you definitely start to see lots more beetles. And I think the peak of beetle time, I always think it's around Christmas time into early January, is when I always seem to see beetles everywhere. To many of my viewers, the seasons that I understand are reversed if you live in the Northern Hemisphere, I dare say peak beetle time would be June and July. And while I've been yabbering away, talking about seasons and being educational, Barbie has been very busy with web. And I've got a feeling she's coming in and getting a bite into the back of the beetle or possibly the edge of its wing case. Beetles are fairly robust little critters. They've got this hard shell that covers their softer wings and I looked at this very carefully. Remember, when a spider gets a bite in, there's often a reaction on the thing it's bitten. And I think I see a reaction going on because the beetle blows a little bubble. And remember, we are keeping count of bites here. Are we up to bite number six? And I know some may argue because we're not clearly seeing what's going on. But I'm pretty sure what went on there was a bite from Barbie. And in seeing what the beetle did... We can call the beetle Spongebob because Spongebob's always blowing bubbles. Okay, like all the other spider bites in the video, I've rewound the video, we've done that. I've slowed up the video, done that. I've gone in closer so we can see the glorious beauty of Barbie the Redback Spider biting. And we can see very clearly there is a reaction there from the beetle. It's a tricky one to work out what's going on because we can't see... Barbie's miraculous chompers and fangs, but I'm pretty sure what's going on there is a spider bite. And this spider bite is one of the longest duration times where Barbie is up next to the beetle. I think she's really doing stuff here. Maybe she's got in between the wing casings as well, because there is a split down the middle of that. Uh, but I think what she's got here is the edge, that is the other edge that we can't see, of the wing casing and possibly got a little fangy wet lip action going on i would have loved to have seen it right up in camera smack bang in the middle but sometimes when you don't see something clearly you can start to fantasize about what's going on there and i'm pretty sure the fantasy that i'm having of barbie getting a fangy bite in 
is correct. And also look how much web is around that beetle now. The beetle is layered in web and we've got six good spider bites in as well. That's going to sting. I'm surprised how much fight the beetle has still got. It is weakening a touch. It doesn't seem to be as vigorous as it was before. But Barbie won't stop doing what she does until she feels she has control. And we're back into real time again. And we're progressing to the next spider bite. And as I'm mucking around here, I try to get some different angles of the dangles of views of what's going on. Now I noticed Barbie went back to the rear of the beetle again, but I think it was more housekeeping. I don't think they were bites because when these spiders bite, it tends to be a session of time for them to fang and venom. And I don't think I was seeing that in that part we just saw. Redback spiders are nocturnal spiders. Normally you would never see this style of activity going on. It's normally done in fairly recluse areas that nobody sees. And what has surprised me is Barbie doesn't seem to be deterred for the fact there's a light shining right at her. And some people say, oh, but the spider's blinded by the light. They're nighttime spiders, blah, blah, blah. But if Barbie was blinded, she wouldn't be so careful around that beetle. The beetle would have taken advantage and potentially snipped off one of her legs. That hasn't happened, and it didn't happen either on the boroscope video where the light was a little bit different. It's a much more focused light in a smaller area. Barbie seems to work fine with light shining on her. And I suppose a reverse argument is, oh, but the beetle is blinded. How unfair is this? But I'm just letting you know that redback spiders, one of the main constant things I see them grabbing when beetles are about is, guess what? beetles. Often it's the black beetles that don't have the snapper roonies on the front. The Christmas beetles, which are brown, appear around Christmas time. Funny that. They'll also grab those. In fact, anything that's beetle-like in the garden, crawling around on the ground, going past their very dangerous webs, is one of their favorite foods. And often you'll see the carcasses of beetles that have been sucked to nothing, left around where the redback spider's nests are. Now, the day I shot this video, it was a really bittersweet day. In the morning in Australia, at about 10 to 7, the news broke that Eddie Van Halen had passed away. Eddie Van Halen is one of the top rock guitarists of all time. Many people would have him in the top three guitarists. In fact, some people would argue he'd be pegged up at number one. When I heard the news, one of the first thoughts in my mind was a YouTuber that I know called Steve from Boston, although I call him Pixie Steve because... That's derived from his original channel name that was Pixielix. I looked on YouTube and I normally don't look in the morning and Steve was live streaming about the passing of Eddie Van Halen and Steve was extremely upset. In fact, he was an emotional wreck. Uh, Eddie Van Halen was one of his top heroes in life. Hang on, I'll pick up on this story. I'm looking at Barbie again and she's up the back of the beetle. Now I believe we're getting into bite number seven. She's doing something quite sneaky up the rear end of that beetle, and I believe it's a bite, but she's not finished with that bit there. She sees a leg right nearby, and I'm pretty sure that's going to be bite number eight. So another double whammy bite going on there. Once we rewind it and we come in closer and slow it up, we're going to hopefully see exactly what went on. Oh yeah, so the video referee of coming in nice and close and having a much better look at what's going on. And by this time, the beetle's running out of puff. In real time, if you saw the video without the slops and reversals, we're getting into the nine minute mark of the spider and the beetle. Some people might see what's going on at the tailpipe of the beetle as a double bite, but I'm just going to classify it as one bite. And to pick up on the Pixie Steve story, yeah, he was completely sad, crying man video he put up as a live stream. Very brave thing to do. And I noticed a plethora of YouTubers putting up their, oh, Eddie was my hero videos on YouTube, but these videos were totally dry eyed. There seemed to be no emotion at all in what people were expressing and saying and showing on YouTube. Yet Steve from Boston puts up one of the most emotional videos in relation to Eddie Van Halen's death. Very bittersweet day, and the sweetness of the day was the fact ACDC released a song, it was up on YouTube, called Shot in the Dark, and it's like a trip back in time to 1979. ACDC are smart. 
they know what works and they tend not to deviate too far away from that winning formula. And thinking about winning formulas, Barbie, my pet redback spider who lives in our yard, has applied eight redback spider venomy spider bites to that black beetle. And after about 10 minutes of a lot of web from Barbie and also those many bites, the beetle has started to move a lot less. Barbie is now starting to assess the situation and there tends to be quite a lengthy standoff time until Barbie comes back to the beetle and starts to feed. I looked on the wiki page talking about redback spiders and there's a section that talks about venom. There's so many large complex scientific words there that I can't pronounce I'm not even going to try and read it to you but I'm going to speak about it in layman's language. After the standoff time and Barbie comes back to the beetle to feed what Barbie's presented with is a beautiful feed of what I'm going to call beetle juice. The feeding session goes on for quite a period of time. Barbie will extract all of the juice from the beetle and all that's left behind is the carcass shell of the beetle and then when Barbie has completely finished the beetle is dumped out of the spider nest and often it lays under the spider nest in the area where she sets up her dangerous webs and other smaller critters come along tantalized by a beetle carcass and unfortunately some of those critters then get caught up in Barbie's trap webs that are underneath her home. It becomes quite a vicious cycle of feeding. So there you go, a nice study and analysis of the way a redback spider puts in multiple bites into a beetle to gain control and weaken the beetle so it becomes the redback spider's next meal. Now up the end here, I'm actually going to go back to the very start of the video because there's a bit of a mystery thing that goes on that I don't understand. Beetles are very complicated critters. Okay, I'm not even going to try and say to you I know much about beetles. I noticed in this video and also the boroscope video, there's a strange fluid that is around the beetle when the redback spider starts to engage with the beetle. Now I threw another beetle in with Barbie the day after I shot this video and I had a slow motion set up on my iPhone and I really wanted to see exactly where this fluid was coming from and hopefully I can see it via this slow motion and I do believe that brown strange fluid is being emitted by the beetle from its mouth end. I thought I'd be smart, I could hop onto Google and work out what's going on here, but there's so many levels of complexity and depth to beetles, I wouldn't even want to be brave to think I understand what's going on. I can only think it's some style of defense mechanism, something that the beetle does when it feels like it's being threatened. I'm not exactly sure what's going on there, Hopefully someone in the audience who likes beetles and likes them a lot because in no way are beetles simple, they can explain to me what this fluid is. And what is nice and a real bonus special treat is we get to see a spider bite shot in slow motion. And just like the other beetles that engaged with Barbie, she gets that first spider bite in as soon as she thinks she can safely. I'm pretty certain that the redback spider will do the same as we saw in this video. There'll be multiple bites to arrest the beetle's movements and get control of it as fast as possible. Now if I change the video back to normal speed, you'll have a feel for how frantic it is down there with the redback spider and the beetle. But I'll pull it back to slow motion again because we're going to take a look at the web that she deals out to the beetle. And in this video, we were really focusing on bites, but it's also really nice to take a look at the way the redback spider deals out a web. And what I noticed across all the beetles that Barbie had captured, there's the same cycle of things that go on. There's the initial fly of web that she does to grab the beetle, make sure it doesn't get away. She gets that first bite in, then she'll go back to doing more web, and there's almost like a cycle of webbing, bite, webbing, bite. And another thing she will do is what I call web maintenance. You'll see her spotting web and making some taut web from the web that she's wound around the beetle. I love watching the way redback spiders capture things in their webs. I actually never tire of watching this style of footage or seeing it for real. It's fantastic to see in real life. It's a wondrous thing seeing the mechanisms of nature. And every time I take a look at redback spiders or anything that I've got in front of the video camera... I learned something because I'm observing something. I really hope you enjoyed this spider bite study video.